psychiatrists specifically, they're just kind of working as sales agents for the pharmaceutical companies. There's nothing like another doctor touting the benefits of your drug to drive market share. They're an extended part of the marketing arm of these companies. Medications play a primary role. We give drugs. Medication is a must. There's a lot of new medications. There are medications available for uh, treating GAD. Medications to use for PTSD. Antipsychotic medications. The typical antipsychotics. Benzodiazepines. Stimulants. Antidepressant medications. MAOIs. Amphetamines. Antidepressant medications. Once the medications have been balanced out. Then we move on to a combination of three medicines. There's no absolute limit that is set for the number of medications. There are so many choices. Apparently we're willing to try almost anything. Τα ψυχιατρικά φάρμακα δεν μπορούν να πουληθούν χωρίς συνταγή. Έτσι, οι φαρμακευτικές εταιρείες προσλαμβάνουν ψυχίατρους για να προωθήσουν τα ψυχιατρικά φάρμακα σε εκείνους που τα συνταγογραφούν. Η πορεία των χρημάτων αρχίζει στις πιο αναγνωρισμένες ιατρικές σχολές παγκοσμίω στα γραφεία ισχυρών ψυχιάτρων με πανεπιστημιακή ή ακαδημαϊκή εκπαίδευση. Με τη σφραγίδα έγκρισής τους, οι φαρμακευτικές εταιρείες βγάζουν δισεκατομμύρια με τα ψυχοτρόπα. There are a lot of academic psychiatrists especially who have ties to 10 or 15 or 20 different pharmaceutical companies. And so they're making a very large amount of money. Whether they're professors or whether they work at big, you know, uh, medical institutions, those drug companies will make sure that they've got them on the payroll somehow. They'll have this person feed this information to, to their other peers, uh, but it's all being motivated through monies being funded by pharmaceutical companies. About 40% of the early stage Marketing dollars for pharmaceutical companies go straight to these thought leaders, psychiatrists. Αυτές οι οικονομικές διευθετήσεις με τα δίθεν άτομα με επιρροή είναι πολύ δελεαστικές. Ένας κορυφαίος ακαδημαϊκός ψυχίατρος μπορεί να βγάλει εύκολα πάνω από μισό εκατομμύριο δολάρια το χρόνο από τις φαρμακευτικές εταιρείες. These people are still considered the stars of their medical centers because they bring in all this great money from the pharmaceutical companies and that helps keep the coffers of the medical center full. Universities receive a lot of money from the pharmaceutical industry. Drug companies are building buildings right next to the medical school. They're, they're funding research right and left. The University of Michigan Depression Center received, I think it was $750,000 from Eli Lilly. And all they do down there is crank out this biological view of Psychiatry and mental illness and depression. Με του ακαδημαϊκού ψυχίατρου να συγκεντρώνουν εκατομμύρια με τα φάρμακα για τα πανεπιστήμια του, δεν είναι να απορρεί κανεί που τα σχολικά προγράμματα επικεντρώνονται στα ψυχοτρόπα φάρμακα. Training programs in psychiatry, the majority of them now are drugs first. You know, you, you're really a psychopharmacologist in a way when you come out of a psych residency training program. Even when I went to medical school, psychiatry did talk to patients. Now all they do is write a prescription and send them away. A psychiatrist is trained for one purpose, to administer psychiatric drugs. Οι ακαδημαϊκοί ψυχίατροι δεν δασκαλεύουν μόνο μελλοντικού χορηγού συνταγών. Διαφημίζουν επίση πολύ αυτά τα φάρμακα και ανάμεσα στου συναδέλφου του. Πρώτα δημιουργώντα δοκιμαστικέ κλινικέ μελέτε που πασάρονται ω αμερόληπτη έρευνα, οι οποίε προωθούν μια επινοημένη ψυχιατρική διαταραχή και το φάρμακο για να τη χειριστεί. Αυτέ οι μελέτε μπαίνουν σε επαγγελματικέ εκδόσει για να διαβαστούν από του συναδέλφου του και να τι μεταφέρουν στα μέσα μαζική ενημέρωση. Αλλά αυτό που δεν ξέρουν οι αναγνώστε είναι ότι στι μισέ περιπτώσει αυτοί οι ψυχίατροι δεν έλαβαν ποτέ μέρο στι μελέτε. One of the most unethical practices we're aware of is ghostwriting of journal articles where somebody at the pharmaceutical company will write the paper and the academic physician will put his name on it and get it published in a major journal when he maybe changed three or four words in the whole article and the article was basically written as a marketing tool by the drug company and yet this academic puts his name on it as if he's the author. He has had no part in the study and also he probably hasn't even read the study results but he is prepared to receive ten, twenty thousand dollars to put his name at the front of the research which gives it added authority. Η ανώνυμη αρθρογράφηση επιπληρωμή είναι κάτι τόσο συνηθισμένο ώστε ακόμα και ο ψυχίατρος που διευθύνει το τμήμα αξιολόγηση ασφάλεια ψυχιατρικών φαρμάκων του FDA επισυνάπτει το όνομά του σε τέτοια άρθρα. The average physician picks that up and reads it. He believes it. And it's not 
a mystery that he would believe it. It seems reasonable that it's in black and white, it's in a good journal, it's in the New England Journal of Medicine, it must be true. Αυτέ οι εκδόσει στέλνονται συχνά δωρεάν σε ψυχίατρους και γιατρού με το πρόσχημα τη γνήσια ιατρική έρευνα. Και γιατί είναι δωρεάν, Γιατί διαφημίσει φαρμάκων αποκομίζουν τεράστια έσοδα για του εκδότε του. So if you go through a medical journal, you'll see page after page of advertising for bipolar disorder and treatment of using medications or advertising for depression and treatment of using medications, schizophrenia. So it's, it's really everywhere. I remember just a couple of years ago, the first time I opened the journal from the American Psychological Association called the APA Monitor, and there was a multi-page ad High gloss, very expensive for Concerta, which is time release Ritalin. I resigned from the American Psychological Association. I wasn't going to be part of this whatsoever. It's very hard when your major source of income is advertising and advertising placement to write an article that's negative about a particular drug and expect that company to continue to buy ads in your medical journals. So that's a major issue. Αλλά οι ψυχίατροι με επιρροή δεν ικανοποιούνται μόνο να γεμίζουν τις ιατρικές εκδόσεις με ανώνυμα άρθρα που έχουν συνταχθεί επιπληρωμή. Διαδίδουν επίσης το κήρυγμα για τα ψυχοτρόπα φάρμακα σε συνέδρια συνεχούς ιατρικής εκπαίδευσης, τα CME. Physicians and nurse practitioners and physicians and assistants are mandated to take a certain amount of continuing education credits every year. Well, 70% of all continuing medical education is now funded by the pharmaceutical industry. That seminar is going to be taught by a professional who is employed by the pharmaceutical company. The very nature of where someone is giving you your support means you are biased to that person's side. Many physicians and many psychiatrists who attend medical conferences don't know that when they go to that conference meeting that's about antidepressants, antipsychotics, and it's generally a academic psychiatrist who's speaking, they don't realize that person's probably making about $10,000 for that one hour speech. Αλλά δεν χρειάζεται να είσαι ακαδημαϊκός ψυχίατρος για να έχεις μερίδιο στην πίτα. Οι ψυχίατροι που συνταγογραφούν ψυχοτρόπα φάρμακα επιβραβεύονται γενναιόδωρα από τους πολιτές των φαρμακευτικών εταιριών επειδή συγκεντρώνουν πελατεία. Psychiatrists, especially high prescribers, are targeted and gifted extensively by the industry. Now that gifting is where you need to get specific. That was not unusual um, during our marketing conversations to say, well, what's our top drug writer? You know, who's the doctor that's prescribing the most of this drug? Well, you know, let's send them to the Kentucky Derby. We offered trips on some occasions to come out and hear a two-hour talk, but it happened to be on a nice island in Hawaii. There were a lot of things that we did day in and day out to try to get the doctors to, to write our drugs, or in my case, to write for the psychiatric drugs. We did a lot of lunches and dinners, and we brought in speakers, and those speakers were obviously paid by us, and we would wave, um, you know, renowned studies at them from renowned journals. But of course, we would never say that these these studies were paid for by our company, and that the that the that it was written by a ghostwriter who was paid by our company, or that our company tends to do a ton of, of advertising within that particular medical journal. We would never say that. Με περισσότερες από 300 εκατομμύρια συνταγές ψυχιατρικών φαρμάκων ετησίως, οι ψυχίατροι με υψηλό αριθμό συνταγών επιβραβεύονται πλουσιοπάροχα για το άνοιγμα νέων αγορών. Λαμβάνουν από τις φαρμακοβιομηχανίες 25% περισσότερο από τα χρήματα που λαμβάνουν γιατροί από άλλες ειδικότητες, με μέσο όρο σε μια πολιτεία πάνω από 45.000 δολάρια ανακορυφαίο ψυχίατρο το χρόνο. From the pharmaceutical companies than any other branch of medicine. The profession of psychiatry couldn't keep its journals afloat, couldn't keep its conferences afloat, couldn't keep its organizations afloat without money from drug companies. The drug companies really have psychiatry in their pocket. This is a profession whose diagnoses have been heavily influenced by people who are heavily influenced by the pharmaceutical industry and whose treatments are almost exclusively these days pharmaceuticals. We should be able to count on them. I do not believe that we can. 
Χάρη στην ασταμάτητη προώθηση από τους ψυχίατρους, η συνταγογράφηση ψυχοτρόπων έχει εισχωρήσει όχι μόνο στην ψυχιατρική, αλλά και σε ολόκληρο τον ιατρικό χώρο. Αλλά αυτή η διαφημιστική καμπάνια έχει μια δεύτερη αιχμή, η οποία γεμίζει τις τσέπες των ψυχιάτρων περισσότερο από κάθε τι άλλο. Και αυτή σημαδεύει κατευθείαν σε εσάς. 